Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? This episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast is brought to you by two of my newest projects, If you like cool things inside of your inbox that are also free, check out my two new newsletters. One is called Odd Jobs Newsletters, where I break down the oddest, weirdest, and coolest jobs out there, how to get started, how to do them, and how much do they pay. Check it out at youareodd.com. That's youareodd.com, just like you would turn to a friend and say, hey, you are odd. That's the domain name of this newsletter. And the second newsletter is called The First Years of Marriage, thefirstyearsofmarriage.com. It's a newsletter that really shines a light on the conversations, challenges, and changes that begin when the honeymoon ends. Check them out. Hey, hey, any youngers. It's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Guess what? You're not getting any younger, but you're here listening to this podcast, and it means so much to me. And by the way, if you haven't heard this yet, I have a goal. I have a goal for this podcast, and I could really use your help. My goal is to get to 200 episodes of the show by the end of the year. And don't worry about that. I am working my butt off to make that happen. But another goal is to get to 200 reviews on iTunes. We are about 165. I could really use your help. If you're listening to the show on the Apple Podcast app or on iTunes, or you can go to iTunes right now, search for the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, scroll down, rate the show, and review it. Putting that in would help us get closer to that 200th review, and that just makes me feel so amazing. I've been working on the show for over three years, and that is a goal that I would love to hit by the end of the year, and I know I can do it with your help so thank you in advance and by the way if you come into contact with anybody today tomorrow on friday who has access to the apple podcast app why not subscribe them to the show and leave a review have them leave a review of the show on their device as well i appreciate it so incredibly much all right let's dive into today's topic today's topic is about something that I recently needed to know more about. It was called How to Get Out of a Funk. And why I'm doing a podcast all about that topic is because I went through a couple of weeks of just being in a funk. It honestly started at my breaking point. And my breaking point was when my Twitter got hacked a couple of weeks ago. It got hacked, all my tweets were deleted, it was awful, it was really hard to get back, and it was really defeating. That was my breaking point. And I was thinking about this the other day. Breaking points happen when we least expect it. And what breaks us is never the thing we would think. My Twitter getting hacked was not the worst thing that's ever happened to me, but it was a moment that really just made me focus on all of the things in my life that were wrong, that were upsetting, that were tough, that were difficult. And it sent me into this breaking point. So our breaking points aren't necessarily things we can predict, things we would think would break us, but they do. When this breaking point happened, I found myself in a month-long funk. I was upset. I was mad. I was even mean to some of the people I love the most, especially Adam. When I'm acting like this, it takes me a very long time to snap out of it. I'm so stubborn. I'm an Aries. And, you know, this is something I've worked on throughout my whole life because staying in these funks is something I used to do for a while, like a really, really long time. And I'd find myself just being upset with myself or people or life for way too long. And it's not good to store so much tension and stress and anger inside of your body. Like it it feels like it stings like when you drink hot coffee too fast and you can just feel it traveling through your body. I feel stress like that sometimes traveling through my body, especially in these funks. So I want to share with you a couple of things that 
can help you get through the funks and that can't help you. So let's start off with the things that failed, the things that did not help me get through these funks. Whenever you're trying to work your way through something, through some feeling, some emotion, some problems, you'll start to see that there's things that work that always seem to work for you. Those things might be hard, but they work. And then there's things that don't work, but those are your default. Those are the things you do anyway, even though they do not work as effectively as you wish they would. Here are some things on my list of things that did not help me get through the funk. Number one were conversations. When I was too stressed or upset to have them, I would just talk in circles and nothing of value came out. And we talked about this on the friendship episode about how if you don't process things, you can't react to things right. And that's what happened to me is I was in this funk and people would try to help. And because I couldn't process how I was feeling, I just did not find that what was coming out of my mouth was nice or the right thing or the good thing or the helpful thing. And conversations were just not things that I could have in that funk. You shouldn't feel bad about the things you can't do when you're in a funk, but you should know them so that you can either avoid them or communicate about them when people try to have you do them. Number two, one thing, another thing that did not help me get out of this funk was yelling. I am a really loud speaker. I am so loud that if you saw my mic settings, you would be shocked. My volume is so low because I'm naturally loud and the microphone makes me even louder. So hopefully this isn't coming through in your ears too loud, but I'm a really loud speaker. But when I get angry or upset, I'm even more loud. I sound like I'm screaming on the top of my lungs when really I'm just speaking a little louder than usual. This drives Adam crazy because it sounds like I'm yelling and it's just not cool. So this can come off as being really aggressive to a person and it's never helpful when you're trying to communicate to come off as being aggressive. So one of the things I have to remember is that when I'm upset or I'm in an argument with somebody is that I need to take it down five steps in terms of my vocal tone more so than the average person because I'm naturally loud and that tension is fueling that tone of voice even more. And the final thing that never helps me when I'm in a funk, which is good to know, is silence. I always try to default to silence because I'm processing how I'm feeling, but truthfully, that isolates people and isolates yourself even more. So rather than just being silent and ignoring things, ignoring people when they call to check in, Instead, it's about just being able to communicate your boundaries, how you're feeling, and that you'll get back to them when you're ready to speak. So as you can see in my unhelpful category, I have conversations that are too premature, I have yelling, and I have silence. These are things that I know if I do again and again and again, because they're my default, will never get me out of a funk, will never make me feel better, and will not solve any of my problems. But here is what helped me get through the funk. Number one, a lot of solo walks. I I feel very lucky to live in a city like Brooklyn in New York where I can just go for a walk and end up somewhere new and it's a very walkable town. I've lived in some places where like especially okay Los Angeles is a great example of this. When you walk around in LA like for long walks on the sidewalks people are like what where are you going what are you doing. I remember I was staying in the Hollywood area once and I would just like go for morning walks and people They didn't say this to me, but I felt like people were like, what is this person doing? That is why I love New York, because you can just go for a walk and you blend in and no one sees you and you can cry on the sidewalk and you can just be really sad and people will just keep walking and tell you to just walk faster. And I love that about New York. So a lot of solo walks helped me just move through this funk by being able to process how I was feeling, process how I was thinking, all of that. Writing down my feelings really helped. Making a list of the things I was feeling helped me sort of move through the confusion and chaos and allowed me to figure out, okay, what's going on in my life that I I, I don't feel great about and what's going on in my life that I feel super grateful for? Those are super, super helpful things to do. And finally, speaking to somebody. And this could be anybody of your choosing, whether it's a therapist, a best friend, someone you trust, someone you um, you, you want to open up to. Picking that person is helpful. When you're going through a funk, especially if you're a person who likes to be inward and not talk to people, you're going to get through it even slower. So you want to find that one person who you can have the calmness to communicate your feelings and share your overall perspective with. 
I'm sharing this with you because if you're finding yourself in one of those funks, know that it's okay to feel how you're feeling. But there are things out there you can do to help or at least understand how you're feeling. And that is what I hope you learned in this episode. All right, my friends, thank you for listening to this. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode for you. Make sure you're hitting subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right here right now so that you get notified of weekly episodes and bonus episodes that are coming your way. If you have questions, comments, want to share with me how these, how these podcast episodes fit into your life, send me a tweet at Jen Glance because I have my Twitter back. Send me an Instagram DM at Jen Glance because I have my Instagram (laughs) or email me jenglance at gmail.com. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glance. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, And join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.